So welcome to our virtual job search success seminar. Um, you can see that there are four of us presenting today, so we'll take a minute to introduce ourselves. Uh, Michael, why don't you, you kick us off? Good midday, uh, wherever you oh, may be. Actually, it's midday mm -hmm. on the West Coast. Oh, I was um, three minutes behind. <laughs> Michael Hampton, Director of Career Development at Linfield. Um, and then um, I'm Donna Montoya. I'm one of the Assistant Directors of uh, Career Development here at Linfield. And I'm Christy McKay. I'm also an Assistant Director in Career Development. Welcome, everyone. And then we have a special guest with us today. I'll let him introduce himself. Hello, everyone. My name is Justin Henderson. I'm Talent Acquisition Manager for Enterprise Holdings, which is Enterprise Rental Car and a few other business lines that I'll touch on a little bit later. So welcome. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you for Thank being you. here, Justin. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're really excited um, to present to you uh, how to be successful in your job search in these coming months. And we're excited that Justin is here to provide his employer point of view. Um, so during this presentation, if you have any questions, go ahead and send them through chat. Uh, we hope that we've managed the security well enough so that um, it's just us and our questions coming through. And um, uh, stand by, We're, we are going to do our best uh, to keep this moving and uh, give you some really pertinent information. So today, this is what we're going to cover. Uh, we wanted to let you know uh, what's on the docket. Um, as you know, a lot of us, um, a lot of you who have worked with us, we really like to start with where you are and who you are um, and take that from internal to external. And so we'll be covering all of the things that you see on the screen today and especially with the focus on what to do now and how to make this work for you um, in this season of social distancing. Um, and so we'll do our best to answer questions and um, talk specifically about uh, techniques that you can use to be successful now. Um, as I mentioned, it all starts with you. So what I actually want all of you participants to do um, is take out a notepad, uh, whether it's virtual or a pen and paper. Um, and as we go through some of these things where it starts with you, um, really take a look and start writing down some of the skills and the qualities that you have that you really want to start highlighting, that you think these employers will really uh, be interested in, and that this is something that you can bring to the table. So we're going to go over a couple different um, ways to look at skills and abilities and, and what employers are looking for, but again, it starts with what you bring to the table and what you want to hone. Um, and so to do this, um, what I'm hoping is that as, as you bring it all together from what we talk about today, you'll be able to take away a couple of your very specific talents or traits that you're like, this is me as a super person. This is what I have to bring and what I'm going to showcase to employers. Um, so from there, we're actually going to have Justin talk about his three, five C's and how to showcase them. So we'll start off with Justin's uh, five qualities that he wants to talk about. Thank you so much, thank you so much. So the first one, and I kind of developed these over uh, my years as a TA professional, but the first one to me is confidence, right? And so um, it's, it's kind of like swagger, right? So like what you can do to really show yourself as somebody who has a ton of skills, has a ton of swagger, has a, a desire to be there and has a, um, a presence, you know, that's something that's really huge. So one thing that you can do to show confidence from a tangible standpoint is your leadership experience. You know, so, you know, everybody um, has, you know, been to college, right? Like that's something that everybody has. Now, how do you separate yourself? And a couple of different ways that you can do that is leadership experience and by showing your presence, um, just the way you carry yourself in the room. The second thing is communication. Um, you know, we, we deal with a diverse uh, group of people, right? We have a diverse world. It's getting more and more diverse as we continue um, to evolve. And so you got to be able to really build a connection with a lot of different people from a lot of different walks of life. And so some of the ways that you can show uh, communication, if we go to the next slide. Let's oh, and you should, I gave you control. So hopefully you'll be there. There we go. go. <laughs> cool. <laughs> ways that you can show your ability to communicate from a physical and a tangible standpoint is your customer service experience. Um, I deal with a lot of people who show me their resumes and they don't have all of their service industry experience on there. And that's something within our business that is huge because it shows your ability to communicate with a diverse group of people. It shows your conflict resolution skills. Um, and it shows that obviously you're willing to serve others, right? So 
you know, being able to show your communication through customer service experience, whether it be really working in customer service or in any other walk of life is something that's huge. Um, and then are you a chameleon? And again, that goes back to the diverse communication set. And so I used to tell people all the time, you know, when I was working in our rental branches as a branch manager, that it's important for us to be chameleons because we never know who's going to walk through that door. So your ability to communicate and build a connection is something that is super huge going forward as you search for your career. Um, one thing that's really huge with us, uh, we're in the customer service and sales industry, doing something that I'm huge about is competitiveness. And so, um, you know, obviously you can show that in your sports and your competition experience. Um, but really what I'm looking for is people that have a desire to win. Um, and so, you know, whether you've been ranked before, obviously everybody has GPAs, right? But how outside of that have you shown an ability and a desire to win? Competitiveness is, is definitely really huge as well. Um, again, I talked about how within an enterprise, we're in the sales industry, but first and foremost, we're in the customer service industry, and we want to have people that have high character, high morals, high values, high ethics, and that are going to represent themselves the right way. Um, you know, our brand is the most valuable thing we own within enterprise, so we want people that are going to represent the brand in the right way. So one thing that you can show that from a tangible standpoint is volunteer experience. Again, it's showing that, you know, you're, you're really involved and, and you really want to be a part of something that's bigger than you. Um, and then obviously another way that you can show your character is your decision making. Do you make the right decisions when you put under pressure? And then the last thing from the five C's is a commitment. We have a career opportunity within an enterprise and so you want to be able to show employers um, that you're committed. You know, you can show that by having a continuous job experience where you're not jumping from job to job. Obviously we understand that as college kids you may have different jobs while you're going through college, but how long were you able to spend? Were you able to get promoted? Were you able to show commitment? Um, and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I went awesome. back. No, it's perfect. <laughs> a little bit of a delay on it. No, that's perfect. But um, the other thing I was gonna talk about was just your resilience, and that shows commitment as well, your ability to overcome adversity. Um, so those five C's, confidence, communication, competitiveness, character, and commitment, but five things that I was Thank you. Um, and a really important note that this will um, be up on our career development YouTube channel as well. So anything that Justin covered uh, that was super important or anything that's coming your way uh, through the rest of the presentation, you will be able to go back and review it as well. Um, so to build off of what Justin uh, introduced to us with his five C's, I want to go over um, some other career co uh, competencies to help round out um, those types of skills and um, abilities that employers are looking for in general. Um, so Justin already covered leadership. Uh, professionalism and work, work ethic is another one um, that our, um, our national association um, that works with colleges and employers has found to be one of the most um, effective competencies uh, to move ahead in the workplace. Um, another one is career management, and this really means how do you look at your own career? We're, we're all in charge of our own career movement um, and finding people to mentor us, uh, working with other people um, to help us uh, learn new skills um, and to take action that way. Um, and then another one that Justin started talking about is global and intercultural fluency. Um, more and more we are in a global world and a global economy as we're all seeing right now in a very different way. Um, and especially with being able to telecommute or doing work virtually, it's actually opened up um, a lot of employers to be able to start thinking, well, do I need to hire someone who lives down the street from me or can I hire someone maybe across the continent or in a different continent? So that's becoming even, um, even more important. Um, in general, what we've already covered really shows this. Most employers are looking for personality traits, which are success skills or soft skills, um, over more of those technical or hard skills. Um, everything that Justin just talked about and that I had on the, the other side, those are success or soft skills. So they're, they're ways that you treat other people. They're ways that you look at the world. And it doesn't matter if you're a kindergarten teacher or a financial advisor, you're going to be a leader. You're going to want to have some sort of inner drive or uh, competition in you. So those are the types of things that will make you successful. Um, this is another graph. And so remember, keep taking notes. If you know that you're really good at some of these and this is the type of stuff that you want to be showcasing and highlighting to employers, this is what I want you to write down. All of these, except for number seven, which is technical skills, 
All of these are these success skills that we're talking about. And this is from another poll um, that was done by our association. These are the top 11 skills that employers look for um, in new graduates when they're hiring. Um, and they are actually ranked. Uh, technical skills is the combination of all the technical skills for all these different sectors. So you can really see um, how important it is to communicate with others, work in a team. Um, computer skills now are considered success skills and not necessarily technical skills since they're so widely needed and so widely used. Um, I wanted to emphasize really quickly uh, the last month or so of everybody starting to work virtually and distance learning and uh, telecommuting. There are a couple skills that have really um, found their way to the forefront that while they were important before, um, they're actually the top mentioned skills that employers are realizing that they really need from their current team members and also what they're looking for in future team members. Um, so the first one is adaptability. Um, as you can see, uh, a lot of us have started adapting, whether it's learning, going to distance learning format or working tele uh, by telecommuting. Communication, uh, especially in written form now, is very important. Um, and especially in oral form, if you're going to be talking on the phone, it's very important that you're able to express yourself without having some, um, needing someone to actually be looking at you. Patience is another one. Um, as you've seen probably through some of your classes and working uh, with other classmates or professors or administrators, we're all on this learning curve together. Um, and people with more patience um, have been doing a lot better in this field. Digital technology is again really coming to the forefront. So whether it's learning Zoom and really starting to use it for the first time or, or um, using other ways of technology to communicate and be part of the team. Goal setting has been really important. So it's been especially important because a lot of us are now working or learning on our own. Um, and it's really important to be able to keep yourself motivated and keep setting goals and reaching those goals and working with the people around you virtually to be able to keep on track. Um, all of a sudden, if your work or study space is your home, um, it, it can get a lot, it, the lines can get blurred. Um, and so to really be able to, to keep yourself on goal and on time. And then the last one is teamwork. So we all know that teamwork has been um, important uh, for a number of years to be able to work together, but it's, it's taking on a little bit of a new form now. Um, so um, I want to move on so that we can talk about connecting with the employers. So I hope that you've all come away from this part of the presentation with a couple of really great key skills uh, that you know that you possess or that you're working on that you want to be able to use and highlight to employers. So let's talk about connecting with them. Um, Justin's going to uh, talk to us about what he knows as part of talent acquisition with enterprise, the best ways uh, to connect with employers. And Justin, I'm going to give you control access again. So bear with me. There you go. Awesome. Thank you again. Um, so one big thing with connecting with employers, right, is networking. Um, everybody understands what networking is, but everybody doesn't necessarily understand how to network effectively so that it can lead to potential opportunities. As we saw in the last slide, 85% of uh, jobs are found through networking. So something that's super huge in terms of your ability uh, to, to build that brand. So one of the biggest things from a virtual standpoint that you can do now, obviously with social distancing is refine your LinkedIn profile. So hopefully everybody already has a LinkedIn. Um, obviously I have a LinkedIn. You guys are welcome to, to share with me on LinkedIn as well, but that is very huge because that is your virtual resume. So, you know, you want to make sure you have a good picture up. You want to make sure that your uh, information is up to date and that you start to build your network through LinkedIn because you never know what type of job opportunities that can lead to. Once you start to really figure out where you want to go and where you want to be in, you want to solidify and follow your top three to five companies. And again, this is all pertinent to LinkedIn, right? So um, figure out what your three to five companies are and start to follow them because you can learn a lot more information based on what they present on LinkedIn. Then you want to verify your skills and goals align with your top companies. A lot of the time people have goals that they want to be, you know, whatever they want to do long term, but it doesn't necessarily line up with what their skills are and then what their goals are. So if you can separately identify your skills and goals, then you can really try to figure out if it aligns with those companies. And you'll be, um, you know, it'd be crazy to see sometimes that sometimes your, your goals don't necessarily line up with those companies and then you can reassess. 
once you do have your three and five companies, you verify your skills and goals. You want to learn learn the jargon and important issues within each field so that you can start to speak as somewhat of an expert on the subject matter. Obviously, you don't work for the company yet. The more you know, the better you're going to represent yourself. Um, and then one of the biggest things that you can do is identify the talent acquisition professionals for each company. And then after you've identified them, reach out to them. Cater your resume to each job and send them to the TA professional. So I can say for myself, like anybody that reaches out to me on LinkedIn at this point proactively, even though we're not in the current hiring space, I'm going to remember them and I'm going to make sure that I reach out to them as soon as I possibly can once we are in the hiring space. Um, and then whether your jobs that you're looking at are hiring or not, follow up with the TAs monthly for hiring updates. Again, persistence is something that is very huge with us. The more that you reach out to me, the more effective you're going to be and the more likely I'm going to be to reach back out to you once we get into that hiring space. Awesome. Um, thank you. And so what Justin just did was really set us up for um, being able to uh, take a closer look at LinkedIn um, and how to use it. So first of all, how to use it to um, connect with talent acquisition folks or people who are doing the recruiting. Um, another way to use it is to be able to use um, Linfield College alumni to figure out different types of companies and different types of positions that may be of interest to you and then start reaching out to them. Um, and so this is just a screenshot of, um, that was taken. And there are about 1,300 alumni um, on LinkedIn right now. And a lot of them are already connected to Linfield Career, which is great. So that's something that you can do right away is connect to Linfield Career Development on LinkedIn, and then you're a little more closely associated with those alumni. Um, and as you go through uh, the screen to be able to, to identify where alumni work, maybe what did what are you studying and what are what did they study and how does that translate into different types of jobs um, or, or positions or companies, uh, you're able to uh, scroll through and actually see what those alumni are doing and you can click on their profile. Um, I know a lot of you have been using LinkedIn already, and a lot of you have probably been using it for this resource. If you have any questions about how to find alumni on LinkedIn, um, that's something that we are here for. And so we'd be happy to make an appointment with you, and we can do it uh, via Zoom, and we can really tailor it to, okay, what are you looking for? Let's go together, and we can actually navigate together through Zoom to figure out um, the types of alumni that you're looking for and how, how to use this tool really to look at uh, career ideas and also connection ideas. Um, so what I was describing before, if you put some certain criteria in, it pumps out with uh, a lot of different alumni who are doing a lot of really cool things. Um, you can connect immediately, you can send uh, um, messages, and you can let career know so that we can help you go through this process. Um, another way uh, that you can do your research and figure out other ways to connect with other um, alumni or other employers is directly from the uh, Linfield Career Development website. Um, so you can see that uh, right on our homepage on the left-hand side, all the way at the bottom, we have a link called Academic Department Career Resources. Um, and there should be every single different major or major cluster listed and a link to that. Um, under those resources, uh, you'll be able to find um, very specific employers that have employed or do employ a lot of your major or your major of interest, um, ways to connect with alumni on LinkedIn, sample resumes, um, uh, different graduate school paths, internship opportunities. And so it's another great way to type, kind of expand the idea of what types of jobs or internships might be interesting to me uh, in what different industries with what, which different employers. One of the most important things about reaching out is to be able to do these informational interviews. So everything that Justin was talking about, about how to use LinkedIn, identify those companies, reach out to the recruiters and the talent acquisition folks, those are prime targets for doing an informational interview to learn more about a company, more about a job or internship position. Uh, we also suggest doing this with alumni or friends of your parents or friends of other family members or friends of your friend's parents. And we'll talk about how to look at your network that way. Um, an informational interview, uh, it can kind of be two pronged. One is you're curious about a type of job or internship that's out there. Um, or a type of career path, and you're able to learn a lot of information 
to help you start honing, okay, the skills that I've just listed off here, um, are, if they're important to me, and what these employers say are important, are those the matches that Justin was talking about? Is, are these the goals that I have for myself? And to really look, um, look inwards to yourself in terms of what you want out of a career while working externally as well. Um, so these are some of the other reasons why informational interviews can be helpful to you. I'll let you take a moment to read those. Um, a lot of you also know about our Connect Me program, and so we've, we've been able to make it online now completely. Um, so through Connect Me, we help students reach out to recruiters, just like Justin, um, or graduate school admissions representatives, or lots of alumni, or our other pieces of our network, our other professional connections who are doing jobs and careers, hiring for internships that are of interest to you, whether you're just curious to start reaching out, to start, some of you are really at the narrowing down where I want to focus place. Some of you are, no, I know I want an internship in this industry with these types of companies. That's where we can help. Um, we help you find those connections and we facilitate that for you. And then we help you do your own outreach. Um, we want to see you do it successfully. Um, so any of you can go to the uh, link listed below. So it's linfield.edu slash career slash connect me program, or just email linfield or career at linfield.edu. Uh, and we will send you the link to what you can now uh, fill out as a Google form to get the information I need from you so that I can help you start those connections. Um, and this is what I was talking about. It is important um, for you to be able to shout it to the world. These are the types of careers I'm interested in. These are the types of interest, uh, internships I'm interested in. Or I know I really like using these skills. What types of jobs or who do you work with who get to use these skills? All of these people can be part of your network. Um, the professors that are on this uh, webinar today listening, they're part of your network. All of us, uh, me, Christy, Michael, and Justin are now part of your network. Um, the Linfield alumni that we mentioned as well. Um, so with that said, uh, I am going to actually turn it over to Michael pretty soon. Um, a lot of what we're talking about right now is really how to set yourself up for starting to seek jobs and internships that are interesting to you. Um, now the question is, are there still internships and jobs available? So Michael, I'm going to give you remote control um, and so you can take it from here. Thank you. And the simple answer to that question is yes. The complexity of that is the current and short term implications for the job economy the, in the next few months. And then of course the long term impact of what this has on the hiring processes of companies large and small. So as you think about what's happening now, there are a lot of unemployment claims that are out there. And a lot of those are reflective of short-term furloughs or layoffs that those jobs will come back as soon as our uh, kind of cultural society is able to connect with each other again. We're able to go out and uh, utilize some of the services, uh, some of the companies and organizations. There are companies who are increasing their hiring right now based off of some of it's their own innovation of what they're doing and how they're kind of pivoting their own business. Others, it's advantageous for unfortunately this situation. Uh, we're talking with uh, somebody from SurveyMonkey later. They're actually increasing their hiring because so many people are utilizing SurveyMonkey during this time. Right, so there's opportunity based hiring uh, there. We're talking with a, a minor league baseball team in regards to their adapting and anticipating a shorter season. And so, how can they still hire interns for that? Again, an opportunity for some of you um, and, and for folks in that job economy. We, I have a friend who actually worked for a uh, marketing consulting firm who was laid off last month and Nike just hired her and she's already started working for Nike. Well, Nike's company line is they're holding hiring or even some layoffs 
yet this person actually is getting a job in this job economy. And so my encouragement to you is to uh, beat the odds. If you start taking action right now, you can beat the odds that um, of, of getting hired for an internship or job. As you see some of those things I'm mentioning, um, and there's, there's a list. Um, Donna, can you stop sharing your screen for a moment? There is a there is a list out there that's a live list of the companies and organizations that are hiring right now that are freezing that are laying people off and so um, it's candor.co c-a-n-d-o-r dot c-o hiring freezes and you can see in real time over 5,000 different companies or organizations who are hiring, who are freezing, who are laying people off. And that gives you some good insight into um, those companies or organizations. Thank you, Donna, if you can go back to the presentation again. So really the idea, and uh, next slide. Really the idea right now is to, as everybody else has mentioned, to make connections and reach out to those specific sectors or companies that you want to work in. Working remotely is challenging for many of us and we love it when people reach out to us and we can schedule a meeting with someone we haven't met before. And what are you doing during that meeting? Well, you're highlighting some of those skills that uh, employers want, right? So there's the connection to those types of things. Uh, but you are taking action and learning about the company and organization so that when they're hiring again, you can be one of the first in line. As Justin mentioned, he is definitely looking out for those superstars right now, even though they're not hiring. And as soon as he's given the green light, he will reach out to those people who reached out to him. And so you want to beat the odds in that way. Uh, I was on another seminar and the idea is take action, start. And you do not have to be perfect in this process. You just have to do it. And there's a lot of flexibility with employers who are wanting to connect and help you in this process, allow them to do that. Um, there are certain uh, uh, job economies that are doing well in hiring right now. Healthcare, technology, manufacturing, they actually, their hiring is up. And then, of course, travel, leisure, and hospitality, the hiring's down. You might have to make some adjustments in terms of your dream career area. And you might have to start someplace else with plan B, C, or D. But the idea is that you're doing something for your own job or internship search success. Um, take this opportunity to be different than other folks and begin the process and engage uh, in, in doing something right now. We can all use the excuse that this is a hard time, uh, there's no way I can get a job, and you're 100% correct if you have that mentality and don't do anything go ahead and start the process and you will beat the statistics and it'll beat the odds uh, in, in the process. Next slide, please. Here are some online resources. And as the Candor uh, mentioned there, um, so go ahead and reach out to some of these, gain some perspective for yourself and how it impacts your particular area of interest when it comes to internships and jobs. And this is data that can inform how you approach your search. A couple other things before I move on, or we move on. Um, now's a good time to volunteer, to do research, to make yourself available to those employers and see how you can fit into to their plans now. I foresee a lot of contract or temporary work coming out of this as employers are hesitant to rebuild the workforce the way it was before. 
And so you want to start investigating ways in which you can tap into that contract or temporary employment market. Next slide. Um, and actually, I think we will we'll take it from there and, and let Christy say some things about this as well. Um, thank you, Michael. A, a lot of uh, what Michael, uh, Christy, and I have been doing these past couple weeks, besides working with you and connecting with you um, and talking with uh, people like Justin and other hiring managers and recruiters, is really looking at a lot of this, um, these articles and these information sessions um, and diving into what the world of work um, is looking like right now. And so these are uh, these top five came out as really great online resources. And again, you'll have access to um, this entire presentation um, afterwards if you can't quite write everything down. Um, so one of the main questions that a lot of students have is, what if I already have a job or internship offer? What now? What does that look like? And so, um, Christy, I'm going to give it over to you, and I'll um, I'll give you control so that so that okay. you can talk to us about that. All right, fantastic. So, if you do already have a job or an internship offer, the very best thing that you can do right now is communicate. Your supervisor or the HR team where you've been hired may not have the answer for you right now but you need to communicate. You need to let them know that you are still interested. You need to know that, let them know that you are willing to work remotely. You are willing to maybe do some contract work if they can't hire you. So, but you have to communicate with that with them. You need to ask some questions and be informed about what this company is doing as well. Let's see, Donna, I am... There we go. Um, so, you know, again, figure out the way that yet your person at this company wants to be uh, communicated with. Do they prefer email? Do they prefer phone? Um, are you going to get on a Zoom? Of course, you're not going to walk over there and uh, knock on their door and stand at their desk. Um, but really, you know, figure out the best way to communicate. Um, and if they are unsure whether they're going to have a position for you, start working on finding that backup plan. Continue your networking that led to your position or your internship in the first place. Um, so keep that going. So I'm gonna transition into the tools that you're going to need as you are doing your job or internship search. And- I'm going to interrupt you for just a moment. Let's open up the, the chat room for any questions that you have thus far for what we've been covering. Please go ahead and write those questions in the chat room. Christy will go on with the presentation and we'll monitor those and sneak them in as we move forward with the resume and cover letter. Okay. So please ask your questions in the chat room. Okay, thanks, Michael. Um, all right. so. I think everybody knows that you need to have a resume, you need to have a cover letter. So let's talk about what you need to do to have the best resume and the best cover letter. Let's see. It is not working for me to advance, Donna. There we go. So, um, think to yourself, what is the purpose of a resume? The most often answers that I get are to get a job, to demonstrate the skills that you have, to let them know the jobs you've had before that make you qualified. All of those are correct, but ultimately the purpose of a resume is to get an interview. Everybody who is invited to interview is believed to have the basic skills needed to complete the job. Um, and so you need to very well communicate what you know and what you have to offer to them. Um, and then the fit comes in once you get to the interview. Okay, and then there we go. So keep in mind that you know, if you're sending a resume, it needs to be on nice resume paper. 
in this day and age, um, you're likely going to send an electronic resume. Make sure that your resume is either one full page or two full pages, not a page and a little bit, because that looks like you just put a bunch of stuff there and didn't focus on formatting at all. The other thing to always keep in mind is whenever you are emailing a resume to someone or uploading a resume to a job site, you want to save it as a PDF so that your formatting stays in whatever program or type of computer the recruiter has. Um, use some highlighting, make sure it's easy to read. And I bet you've all read ahead and you're looking at that last bullet going, what in the world? Make sure you have somebody proofread it, a person, because that sentence made it through a spell checker. And there is everything wrong with that one. So let a person be your eyes, your final eyes on your resume. Make sure that you put a header on there so that it is very clear who the resume is coming from and how they can get a hold of you. We no longer need to include a street address. They're not gonna mail you a letter. They're gonna call you or email you. And at some point, if they're hiring you, yes, they'll need to know an address, um, but that comes later down the road. And this is a header that you are using on your resume, on your cover letter, on your references, on any correspondence you have with them that is not just in the body of your email. There we go. Your next section on your resume needs to be your education because so many of you are either applying for internships or that first professional job after graduation. And your education is one of those, um, one of those things that really helps you uh, be a strong candidate for that. So you know, use the abbreviations BA or BS. Uh, tell me when you are graduating. And you'll notice on this example that we simply say May 2020. We don't say expected May 2020. So if you're within four to six months of graduating, you can simply list that date. You don't need to tell me that it's expected. But if it is far in the future, you want to do that. Give me your GPA if it's something you wanna brag about. We consider a braggable GPA three, five or above. But if you're really, really proud of your 3.4, you can go ahead and put that on there as well. If you have any scholarships or programs that you are particularly proud of that really highlight what you have to offer as a candidate, this is the place where you can go ahead and list them. If you need to, give me some context as we did in this example of the study abroad program. Okay, Donna, I am not able to move again. There we go. Um, as we get down to experience sections, I would like you to, you know, as you're doing a first draft, I recommend that you put it all in chronological order and then look to see what you can group together so that you can have in bold, big type, you know, graphic design teaching experience or communication experience, any chance that you can to have highlight on a skill or something that you know, do it. Um, include the dates, but generally put those on the right hand side um, because the titles and the skills that you have are more important than any of those dates that go on there. And what you want to do is within each section work from present backwards and that allows you to have ultimate control over what appears first on your resume because you can arrange those sections as you want to. And Christy, I'm going to um, jump in really quickly. We had a really great, great question um, that I, I tried to answer briefly about graduation dates. Yes. Um, so one person said, well, since we're, we're postponing the ceremony until July or August, what do we put? I believe, um, and another administrator or professor, correct me if I'm wrong, that you're, you're still graduating, you're still finishing your Linfield degree on the original date. The ceremony just isn't going to be until later. So, so May 2020. May 2020 is going to be it. Okay, we can move on. That was a great question. Thank you. Yes, very good. Okay, can you help me advance to the next slide? There we go. So 
when you're writing what goes under each of your experiences, I want you to think about skills that you gained from them, not tasks that you did. So looking at this position, the way that we have it focused here, we are talking about tasks, answering phones, following procedures, scheduling appointments. Those are things that the next person who fills that job is going to do. And what you want to do is focus on what you actually learned from that position. So this is the same position, but we're looking at active skill words instead of tasks. Instead of answering the phone, I managed a multi-line phone system and assisted customers. Wow, that sounds a little bit better than answering phones. So think about what you have learned and how this helps you be a strong candidate for your next position. We always encourage you to put some, what I refer to as just other stuff on your resume. So is it activities? Is it campus leadership? Is it community involvement? Um, and then if it is something that is relevant to what you are applying, that's when you want to go ahead and give me some more detail on those positions. Now, I hope you're noticing here, I didn't put any dates on this because with community involvement, there's a little bit more, um, it's a little bit looser. And so you can have your community involvement cover a little bit of a longer area um, as long as it is relevant to what you're applying. Now, as you gain more experiences, you might have a number of different sections that come on your resume you have ultimate control over what these titles are and what they fit into or what fits into each of these uh, categories. So make sure that they're relevant, make sure that, that it allows you to talk about skills that your future employer wants to see from you. Now, cover letters, a little bit different than, than resumes. I like to look at a resume as these are the facts. This is what I know, this is what I've done. And your cover letter is the story behind it. So you're able to fill in some of the blanks. Why did you choose to do this job? What did it mean to you? How does this relate to you know, what you're applying? So again, same header. I want you to make sure that on the top of the letter that you are addressing formally uh, the person that you are applying to. And then if you don't know who is doing the hiring for a position, try to find out. You can do this through networking. You can do it sometimes from just a call to the front desk of the company um, and asking the question. So, or calling into HR, asking, telling them you have a question about the position and make sure you have a question for that uh, hiring manager, but that's a good way to be able to find out who that is. So your cover letter is a basic three paragraph letter. First paragraph, why are you writing? Please accept my application for the XYZ position at your company. Your second paragraph is where you really show fit. I've had these positions and this is what it meant to me and this is why I'm interested in your company. I've been a customer of your company for years and now I'm really excited to take this history and you know, work with you to help whatever. So you see what we're, where we're going there. It's that fit. It's not the skill, the I did, the I did. It's more of a meaning to that. And then your third paragraph is really just wrapping it up. I look forward to connecting with you and talking more about my qualifications for this position. So wrapping it up pretty quickly. One page long, one page only. Okay, and I'm having trouble advancing again, Donna. Okay, there we go. And then the third document that I get to touch on is your references. As you're applying to positions, create your reference sheet so it is available, but you only provide it when somebody asks for it. And this is how it goes. If I'm interviewing with somebody and they're like, wow, you know, we want to move you on, but I need to check your references first, you can say, well, here you go. I have a copy with me now. Or as you get home from an interview or done with a Zoom call, you can send an email with that attached and include that with your, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with me. I'm really excited to move forward. 
my references are attached. Make sure that you talk to your references before you list them. I don't want you to simply say, hey, Donna, I'm gonna list you as one of my references. I want you to say, Donna, I'm applying for this position and I'm really excited about it because of this and this. If somebody were to call you, would you feel comfortable giving me a positive recommendation? What this does is it allows her to say, yes, absolutely. And then I can say, oh, I'm excited about this and here's my resume and here are some things that I'd love for you to touch on because we worked on this type of a project. What it also allows her to do is to say, you know, Christy, I don't think I'm the best person to refer you. Uh, I don't feel like I know you well enough. I worked with you on this and this project is totally different. And you know what, that might hurt my feelings, but I would so much rather have my feelings hurt at this point and find somebody else who will say something great than to have me not get the job because of something that Donna may have had to share about me. So be smart about it, have those conversations. And uh, we had another really great question um, before we move on to what the resume is going to get you, which is the interview. Um, specifically, who can you use for references? That's a really great question. Um, Christy, did you want to address that? Absolutely, absolutely. So we like to look at references as giving you a really well-rounded picture of who you are. So I always recommend a professor, somebody who says she gets this concept and she shows up in class and participates. Somebody you've worked for. So she shows up for work, she's a great team player. Somebody who knows you outside of the classroom and outside of the work environment. This could be an advisor, a coach. Um, avoid listing a family friend. Recruiters simply don't take that seriously and they just cross that off and um, don't list that. If you have a fourth person that you want to list, Go ahead and do that. We say you always want to list three or four references and um, that can talk about different areas of your life and um, give a good picture of who you are and what you're all about. Justin, do you, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Do you have any other advice about resumes for students? No, I mean, I think you guys really nailed it. Um, I think the biggest thing that I look for is to make sure that the resume lines up with the interview once you're into the interview, right? So that you're able to really speak about it as opposed to just trying to make it, you know, better than what you actually represent, right? Like, I want to see the accurate representation of the person I'm interviewing as opposed to, like, an amazing mm -hmm. resume, right? So if your resume is amazing, that's great, but I want to be able to align the resume with you. So just make sure that it's real. Thank you. Definitely. I'm going to move quickly through the um, interviewing piece and uh, then hand it over to Justin so he can talk a little bit about his company and organization. Um, and I'm moving through these intentionally. So when this day and age, make sure that you have everything understood from who's calling who what link you're gonna press, do you have that technology on your computer already, and do you have a password for it? You want to arrive in the chat room or the Zoom room or where whatever format you're using about one minute before it starts, and you need to be ready to go. Now, you can do a lot of fun things with virtual backgrounds, right? And you need to, uh, you know, is, is this the professional message that you want to portray? Think about what's in view behind you. Should it be your closet, your bed? You want a professional plain wall would be fine. Uh, this is the background of a company that, that we visited over Jan term. But I think that you want to, to be very cautious about what you have in your background. Also be aware of where the camera is. If you'll notice, camera's at eye length level and that's ideal so you're not looking down or up on uh, somebody in that way so your, your virtual handshake and I, i'm not a big fan of that graphic because it's uh shaking hands and i think that's going away in our company culture for a long time um 
but your virtual handshake is a smile and a hello. And um, it's also to test the voice in terms of the, the level of conversation and you'll figure that sort of piece out. Um, be aware of the small talk that needs to happen. Uh, I'm, again, I'm moving through this fairly quickly because I want to give justice, Justin his due justice in terms of time. Uh, and so let us know how we can help you once you land that interview and we do mock interviews via Zoom and uh, other ways of doing that. So I'm just moving through this quickly. We're gonna get to, so the question that just came in, how should you dress for your virtual interview? Should you uh, dress head to toe professionally? So one school of thought on that is yes, because you want to be in that mode of I can rock the world and I look nice. And um, if they ask you to stand up during the interview, you want to make sure that you're uh, not in your uh, sweats, but your nice uh, slacks or, or uh, whatever you're wearing for the interview. So my suggestion is to treat it as if you're going in person and mentally and physically be ready for that interview. The darker colors are better on screens. And so think about that as well. Is it okay to wear a headset headphone? Um, I like that because you are able to focus better, I think, in terms of what you're listening to and your sound quality will be better. One of the things you need to be aware of is this adds a little bit different vibe to the interview and almost space alien type. Um, so if you have the smaller type of earbuds, that would be better. I don't have experience with the, uh, the uh, I, what are, what are they called, iPods? AirPods. Yes, the, the iBuds, earbuds, whatever, uh, that are wireless. So you wanna test those out before you interview with those. So great questions, thank you. Justin? Awesome, thank you, thank you again. Um, so really quickly, just wanna kinda touch on a couple of additional tips. So, you know, like we talked about, you wanna define your career goals. And again, uh, you wanna ensure that your, your skills align with your career goals. One thing that's big for me um, is identifying your ideal work environment. That's one of the first questions I always ask in the interview is what is your perfect atmosphere? Because I wanna know what type of environment you wanna work in um, and assess if that aligns with the environment that we have. If somebody says I wanna work in an office setting but in front of a computer um, at a cubicle, you know, all day, that's not gonna align with our management trainee program, right? So you really Really want to make sure that you can identify your ideal work environment. We already touched on researching companies, but one of the biggest things is be open-minded. And what I mean to that is, again, your skills and your goals may not necessarily align with what you thought you wanted to do from a career standpoint. So, you know, for instance, I didn't know that I wanted to rent cars growing up, right? You know, but I had to be open-minded to that opportunity and it turned out to be a career for me. So you want to make sure that you always increase your options, especially in these times, like we talked about earlier, you know, there are a lot of companies that are hiring that may not have necessarily been your top choices, but being open-minded may, you know, result in a career for you. So um, just a little bit about us. Um, Enterprise Holdings, again, is Enterprise Rental Car, National Rental Car, and Alamo Rental Car, as well as uh, some few other uh, rental car um, uh, rental industries, I should say. We're a global transportation company. We're actually in 100 plus countries. Um, we have 100,000 plus employees, 10,000 plus locations, and over 2,000, excuse me, over 2 million vehicles. So um, our goal is to really grow all of our brands um, to as large and as recognizable as name as Enterprise Rental Cars. So we also have fleet management, uh, which is uh, selling our vehicles from an inventory standpoint to companies so that they can have fleet vehicles. And you guys see these several other vehicles, uh, other companies as well that we have including truck rental, car sales. The thing that is unique about our program is that everybody within all of these different business lines starts as an enterprise rental car management trainee. So I started as a management trainee in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, um, June 2010. So I'm almost 10 years with the company and rose up to assistant manager and then branch manager, and then an area manager where I was overseeing six stores. And then I transitioned into talent acquisition in Raleigh, North Carolina. And now I oversee talent acquisition for Oregon and Southwest Washington. So I moved all the way across the country for the company because of those opportunities to get promoted from within. Um, and again, all of those other business lines have those same opportunities to start as that environment, environment, environment training. So 
What is a management trainee? It's our entry level position with a career path. It's comprehensive. Um, individuals will learn sales, business development, financial analysis, management skills, customer service, fleet control, entrepreneurship, and it's promotion again, 100% from within. The CEO of my company started as a management trainee. Um, so you really do have that opportunity to start at the bottom, so to speak, and really grow all the way up to the top of your organization. Typical branch, um, five to 10 employees, 100 to 200 vehicles. There are some branches that are smaller. There are some branches that are larger. And then this is our, what we call home city locations, our non-airport locations. Our airport locations have very, very, very few, uh, m many more apart, basically. But um, at our home city location, which is where our management trainees start, this is the typical makeup. Um, we're decentralized, and what we mean by that is that the branch manager has the opportunity to run their branch the way they see fit. Obviously, we have to follow the model in terms of customer service, but they have the ability to grow their business the way they see fit. Um, they also have profit and loss responsibility. Obviously, we are in a for-profit business, so they have the opportunity to increase their profits, and their income is tied to their performance and their profits. So as a branch manager, as an area manager, I was tied to my branch's profitability. Um, and then they have a responsibility to grow the local business. So a management trainee is going to be able to uh, assess all of these different things, see what they want to do, grow within the company based on their performance into assistant manager, branch manager, area managers, and then potentially diversify into um, other business lines or continue to grow through the operations as well. So. Awesome. Oh, thank you. Um, so thank you, everybody, for uh, coming to this virtual job search success seminar. Um, I think it was really wonderful to be able to wrap up with um, what a really cool career opportunity could look like and what Justin represents. Um, he is now part of your network. So if you're interested in just learning from Justin, either from his career path or from someone from a recruiter's perspective to do another curiosity conversation or informational interview with him, let us know, just email career at linfield.edu and we will get you his contact information. Um, and yes, and so he can now be part of your network as well. Um, I'm actually curious, so we covered a lot today. I'm curious if you would like to um, respond via chat, um, what's a next step for you? What's one of the next steps? Um, I know we covered a lot. Um, and as I ask that, I'll, um, let's, let's see what everybody has to say. Um, and I'll also finish up just to say that just because of time and we want to stay within our about one hour time frame, um, a lot of the interviewing is changing now and we are going so much more to um, the virtual or online methods. Uh, so career development can help do practice interviews with you and we will do it over Zoom or we will do it over uh, the phone, however it's going to be scheduled for you. And so we can talk a little bit more about that um, when it comes up. Um, so for any of you who would like to share another career step that you have identified through this uh, seminar, please let us know. Um, and then there was one more question. Uh, what would you do if during the video your Wi-Fi goes out? And um, I just answered that online. Oh, you did. And you just answered it online. So make sure you have a phone number to call and explain what happened and move on. Um, and we have a couple next steps coming in. So that's really awesome. It sounds like uh, you, you're gonna have a couple really great takeaways. Um, so as you're setting up your interviews, make sure that you have that phone number to call. Um, technical difficulties, is it, it can be more of a mind game than an actual tech game. So do your best to embrace the fact that it happened, that you had done what you could have um, ahead of time to mitigate it and then move on and don't let it uh, control your mood of how you think your interview is going to be going. Those and just really let you know that during this seminar, my whole computer froze and I was not able to hear anything going on. And so I logged and left the meeting and came back in and then it worked. And so keep calm, make good decisions and try different things and don't make a big deal out of it because you'll be able to handle it. You will. Um, we are here to help you. And so uh, we are still doing uh, career appointments. So whether that is uh, making those connections or how do I get in contact with Justin or okay, really want to look at those skills and the work environment and the, the type of fit or um, I'm ready to connect to some alumni where uh, we are doing Zoom appointments and we can do it by phone as well if you prefer. So just email career at linfield.edu 
Um, and a big reminder to keep going on Cat Connect. Um, as Justin mentioned, um, and as we've shown, there are still companies hiring, um, and there are still companies that are posting who uh, maybe you had never considered before, and now is your moment um, to take advantage of that. So we have a lot of announcements um, and other webinars up there, and then also uh, the job and internship positions and the volunteer opportunities that Michael had mentioned before. Um, so as we wrap up, and I think it is exactly, it is 101, so we've taken one more moment of your time. Um, so I wanna thank everybody for coming. A big thank you to Justin for joining us and getting his talent acquisition mind uh, and viewpoint in. Um, it was very valuable to, to be able to round out this seminar. Um, and, and uh, oh, Professor Nelson uh, just posted the candor.co uh, company or the uh, website. So have fun with that, Professor Nelson. Um, you know how to reach us and we are still here um, virtually for you all and we're looking forward to seeing you and working with you in your search. Uh, Michael or Christy, is there anything you wanted to add, Justin, as we log off? Thank you for having me. Go Cats. Look forward to connecting with any of you. Thank you all. <laughs>